Of course, we are going with mission. Th I, I did go with. I did originally go with the abyss, right? I'm not retracing my steps here, am I? Certainly hope so. Oh dear, I actually genuinely can't remember. Uh, but I'm fairly confident we went down this path. And then I only had two missions left to go. For whatever reason. Yeah, I also think I did the Abyss. Also, hello, Flame. It was supposed to be the shorter path, so that would make absolutely perfect sense. Alright, so it's Scenario 3, Arrow's Flight. The sorceresses to the northeast are rebelling for the good of the Empire. You must quash the feeble uprising on your way to the mountains. I have the breastplate, whatever that does. And I get a choice of... Uh, I was about to say artifacts, but I get a choice of uh, options to artifacts. And um, one skill, I can pick advanced logistics. The major scroll of whatever. And the mage's ring. I'm fairly confident advanced logistics is the way to go, although I'm not so sure about that. The major scroll of knowledge is probably the artifact over here. I would have to look them up. Logistics is a safe bet. It obviously basically never hurts. I might as well investigate these options should I choose to. I obviously might as well see if I just get basic logistics. Should I not pick advanced logistics? But I think I'll just go with advanced logistics right off the bat. This area must be secured for the sake of the Empire. Our spies have reported a discord between the Kingdom of the Knights to the north and that of the oppressive sorceresses to the northeast. Perhaps this feud can be exploited for our gain. Yes, perhaps it can. Here's Mirini. Here's New Dawn. And here's a foundry. Excellent. We already have the statue, we have the orchard, we have the well up. We also have the Mage Guild at Tier 2, which means that we'll be able to get the Ivory Tower the very next turn. Might as well recruit the Balls and the Halflings. I do not think I want to recruit the unupgraded Golems. And of course, I am always hesitant as far as um, initially attacking with tiny armies against neutral forces. I guess it's just a force of habit. Might as well take basic mysticism on a magic-based hero. It's not gonna crash. It's not gonna crash. As long as I do not alt-tab, my goodness, I'm fully confident it's not gonna crash again. So, uh... <laughs> so you can relax as far as that's concerned. Scouting on basic or ballistics on basic. Since conquest is something I plan for, I might as well take ballistics immediately. There's a gold mine right there, right next to us, guarded by a couple of goblins. Now, I'm not sure if I have a strong enough force quite yet to deal with them immediately, but uh, I do have quite a force. Um, well, I, I do have... I will have quite a force, is what I presumably should say. I don't quite have it on me, so to speak. But since I can get the Ivory Tower right this very turn, I can get all the way to tier 5 on turn 2. And I guess two mages um, won't hurt, so to speak. At least they won't hurt me. They certainly might pose a threat to my foes. From the Observation Tower, I see all the nearby bits of the land. This map isn't particularly enormous. It's reasonably sized. There is a red barrier over here. I'll have to find the password soon enough. This is the southwest corner of the little map. Yes, the area is quite secure. I'm neatly tucked away in a corner. There's an uh, impassable barrier over here, and the only path from which I expect some degree of resistance in the nearby future is the path to the north over here. 
Once again, I should secure the area reasonably quickly and then um, deal with the knights and the sorceresses. For now, I will just rely on the fact that they are not allied with one another against me. And as long as they keep bickering, they keep fighting, squabbling amongst themselves, I should be able to come out on top. If it wasn't for that, it might be quite difficult considering the size of the map, which isn't particularly impressive. It's not the tiniest of maps, there are certainly smaller ones, but uh, it's a reasonably small one. This is as far as I can tell, I, I think it is. I don't know the relative sizes in this game. Lots of goblins, that between, that's between 20 and 49. Can I actually handle such a number of goblins so early on? I don't think I would feel particularly comfortable fighting them right now. Hold on, 20 and 49. Mm. I do want the gold though, I want the gold immediately. And if I fail over here, I might as well restart, let's do it. Let's fight the goblins. Every time I see a force like that just spread out, it seems uh, significantly less threatening. Then when you just see it on the map. I look at the, these guys on the map and think to myself, oh my goodness, it could be almost 50 goblins. And then I look at these tiny little stacks of seven and think, yeah, I can take them on one by one. Especially since I do have a spell I can cast, I have a couple of balls to assist me. I easily was able to handle them with no losses. And by the virtue of doing that, I can secure the gold mine on turn two. Spell formation happens when the enemy thinks he has the upper hand. Uh, well, not, a, not in those sorts of, sort of circumstances, though. Hmm... I guess it would have made more sense to keep them clumped up in a single stack, although every time you fight neutral monsters, they are dispersed like that, automatically. You do get some overkill damage when you fight with multiple stacks versus just bashing a single one, so that's also a factor, I guess. Hmm, bit of a thinker, that one. Alright, should I take the quill? That'll allow uh, enemy forces to join me quite commonly. Ooh, I also don't know what that artifact is. What is that all about? Let's take the quill. We come across the spot and quarters of a retired soldier. The soldier tells you that he is willing to pass on the statesman's quill to the first true leader he meets. Fine. Be that way. Alright then. I am now... fairly well secure on resources. I am getting... Tier 5 units, and I do believe what I ought to do now is recruit a tier 2... <laughs> a tier 2 hero. Well, uh, is that really tier 2? I would say uh, a secondary hero. The way I prefer to phrase it. And I might as well use it here immediately to flag a sawmill. I have to keep the influx of resources reasonably steady. And I have to get those resources reasonably quickly. I do believe that to be a priority. Now, I will not bother Mirini with such menial tasks as uh, acquiring the resources lying about. I will, however, transfer as much of the army to her as I can. Oh dear. I've completely forgotten about that. Of course, she's got the breastplate of Anduran. So her defense is through the roof. It's all the way up to six. Of course, she's going to have an easy time dealing with all of this nonsense. Right. Well, either way, let's level her up with all the gold nearby. Pick up all the resources with Wilfrey over here, the secondary hero. And uh, back at my castle, I can't really accomplish a great deal, mostly because I have decided to recruit an initial hero, so I can't quite get the cliff nest. And I need to get the library to be able to afford the upgrade to the ivory tower, which unfortunately requires resources I do not have. I need sulfur, I need mercury, and I need crystals. Not gonna happen anytime soon. I also need the cliff nest for the cloud castle, that's not happening anytime soon. Well, actually the cliff nest is something I'll get the very next turn, and for the cloud castle I just need three more gems, so at this stage I might as well Build a marketplace to be able to trade for resources further down the line. The usual. 
And with those four gems, I will have enough for a cloud castle before the end of the week. How unusual and how awesome at the same time. Truly inspiring, all right then. Should I recruit unupgraded mages? I said I would have enough this week, but I also need to have the gold. Oh, don't be like that. I mean, I know the mindset and I appreciate the mindset. I know that it's uh, quite correct to think this way. My goodness, if uh, I'm getting all those resources, what is to come? But no, 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 let's not panic preemptively. Also, I could hypothetically recruit all the mages right off the bat, but then I will be taking the gold away from myself. First of all, let's check the relative income. Every single turn I get uh, uh, two and a quarter K gold. And how much do I need exactly? 12.5, 12, 12 and a half. I get two and a quarter, I need 12 and a half. How long does that take? Well, if it was two and a half, that would be five in two days, that would be 10 in four, and in five I would have enough. It's a little bit less, so it's probably about six days. Uh, six times this, that's... Uh, yeah, six days would be uh, enough. Is, is five enough? Uh, five times two, so five is uh, not enough as far as my calculations are concerned. Five times yeah, so it's six days, assuming I do not really have any gold to begin with, which is not true. So five days, if, uh, if I am to not collect any gold, and if I am to keep the gold that I have now, hmm. So I will ultimately get the Cloud Castle next week. Not because I don't have the gems, but because I don't have the gold. I could have picked up the gold from the chests. I could have gotten the Cloud Castle during the first week, I think, had I done that. But what is done is done. Do I get the mages for Mirini? That is the question. Because I can get them early on and she can possibly... Uh, parlay them into higher gains further down the line. I know. It could be quite useful. Fine, let's take the experience. Uh, take pathfinding so that she has the mobility. And uh, let's head west. Let's clear out everything over here in the corner because I will not be coming back to these areas anytime uh, soon. As soon as I clear all of that out, I need to head into enemy territory to go out and conquer reasonably quickly. So obviously I need to clear out what is the furthest away from the enemy forces, since uh, backtracking is uh, a fool's errand. And obviously it's stuff near my castle, so there's also that aspect to it. The upgraded dwarves move much further, move much faster than the, than the unupgraded version. I was surprised at uh, the relative ineffectiveness of my mages. I will not be casting spells at the dwarves because that tends to end very poorly. Doesn't tend to be particularly effective. Now, of course, the mages will not be dealing too much damage. Since there's only two of them. But that's okay. They'll manage anyway. I've lost a single ball, which is perfectly acceptable. Learn a new spell, which is summon boat. Oh, please. What is the artifact? For a clearing, you observe an ancient artifact. Unfortunately, it's guarded by a nearby giant. Do you want to fight the giant? Yes, I want to fight the giant. I know I'm not particularly powerful, but I want to fight the giant nonetheless. Let's cast a lightning bolt. And bash it from afar with all my units. Strike with all my might. I know I have unnecessarily sacrificed my balls, that's great, I've lost two of them. I get either Wisdom and Expert or Ballistic Sun Advance, let's get to... Wisdom and Expert, when will I possibly be getting... Tier 5 sp Victorious, you take your prize, the Legendary Scepter! The Legendary Scepter adds two points to all attributes! Hello there! I just got the set. Do I pick navigation or scouting? I don't want either, quite frankly. They're not that useful. I will not be sailing the seas. Fine, let's take scouting. Might as well. Look at this! 
Look at the stats. What a tremendous boost. It is the third map of the campaign. Arrow's Flight. This one. Of the Price of Loyalty campaign, of course. And things are going as smoothly as they possibly could. Oh, I just have to, uh, presumably, uh, deal with the sorceresses. The rebellion to the northeast. I... Dude, you can look it up online. Seriously, it's the third mission, Price of Loyalty. I have already clicked I, and if you were here for the beginning of the stream, you would have had the opportunity to read it. So, no. Sorry. Well, I know, I know, and uh, that is, that is of course your prerogative, that is, that is up to you, and certain things are up to me, I guess that's uh, it's just the way things work out sometimes. Alright then, as I have previously mentioned, I will get the Cloud Castle further down the line, significantly further down the line. Not necessarily this week. Alas, alas. Had I collected all the gold near the castle, I might have had that opportunity. But right now, it seems uh, that the earliest I'll be able to do that will be next week. Which is obviously perfectly acceptable. Uh, considering that this campaign tends not to be particularly difficult. None of it tends to be. Obviously, I'll just use Wilfrey to collect... All of this stuff lying around, and from time to time, obviously, I might stumble upon some gold. Now, it is day six, I could hypothetically head back to the castle for some reinforcements, but of course, they'll slow me really down to a halt, essentially. Let's see now. Additional mines would be necessary for me to actually be able to get the upgraded mages, the arc mages, by uh, acquiring the upgraded dwelling first, of course. What do I need exactly? I do believe it's uh, sulfur and mercury. Nope. Uh, sorry, it's uh, it's sulfur and crystals, but which I'll need the mines. There's the sulfur mine. Crystal mine is bound to be around here somewhere, but uh, alas alas, I'll have to get to it further down the line. Obviously, I don't have the leadership to take this artifact. Might as well visit the Heart of the Magi. Collect all the stuff lying around. The usual. I'm not be getting anything this turn. Might as well get the gold before next week. And of course, collect as many halflings as I can, even though they stack up. So, uh, they wouldn't have really disappeared had I waited until next week. Oh, and of course, when the next week hits, I'm going to visit the Water Wheel yet again. Obviously, the usual general modus operandi. It didn't get flagged properly. You know, you say that it's white, and now it's, and now it's red! Yeah! <laughs> Fascinating how that plays out, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, you can clearly see it belongs to me. On the minimap, it is blue. But th then there's this slight tinge of red over there. What is it doing there? I have absolutely no clue. If you look at the map screen, obviously everything is perfectly fine with it. There are no red mines, red heroes, anything in this area. But the minimap tells a different story. As of course, because this game is somewhat busted. But that's okay. <laughs> Uh, that's perfectly fine. Or at the very least, I'm uh, not really able to do much about it, so I just live with that. I have resigned myself to this fate. And of course, as we visit the Heart of the Magi, introduced by the expansion, we get uh, a glimpse at the enemy forces. Look at this guy. Look at Tyro over there with several pikemen. And a pack of archers. What is this? What is this army? Seriously, what is this supposed to be? Look at him. Look at him right there. Being all vulnerable and weak. Broken artifacts that make you raise liches with necromancy. Well, you know, for a definition of broken, I think that's intentional behavior. And if I play necromancers, I 
I'll be quite pleased with that result. Uh, whoa. Yeah, speaking of results, um, here's Draconia. With a mildly impressive army. Why exactly did I gasp so much? Okay, that is a horde of upgraded elves. Fair enough. That is uh, somewhat mighty. But it's, uh, it's certainly nothing to panic over. I've definitely had worse. I have been through worse. Significantly worse. Let's take these forces, head back home and deliver reinforcements. As I tend to do time and time and time again. Lots of dwarves over here. Let's fight them basically on autopilot. We could turn out to combat on. Never done that so far. I don't plan on doing so anytime soon. But uh, is it nice to know that that's an option? I do know that there's, there's an option. But uh, I don't think there's much use for it at any point. Is there? And instead of blocking uh, the dwarves over there in any significant fashion. I might as well attack with the rocks right here deal with the immediate threat yes and let the dwarves uh, slowly shamble towards me I guess the armor is uh, quite impressively heavy so I don't hold the low mobility against them but then again again how is it that they can suddenly move a lot faster go a lot further once they become elite or whatever they're called once they become battle dwarves do they undergo strenuous strength training or something like that? Curious minds wish to know. Yes, one of the things uh, that... that make uh, the Price of Loyalty campaign special, of course, is uh, all the expansion content that uh, they insist on including. So you have these... newly minted artifacts. Like the staff I have also recently gathered. I've lost a single ball. Luck or ballistics? Let's go with luck. No dwarves are dwarven citizens drafted. Uh, the battle dwarves are a standing army, huh? I see. Uh, I see. Well, not that many uh, have actually gone through sufficient training then. We mostly have uh, a militia of dwarves fighting us. We have the legendary scepter, which is, I'm fairly confident, an expansion artifact. We, of course, have the heart of the magi. We have all those barriers. And we have the new heroes. How glorious. No new faction, though. Although, as far as I understand it, there was a plan to include that uh, that wonderful desert faction, wasn't there? But those plans, unfortunately, did not come to fruition. But you know what they say about mice and men. And heroes and magic. And might. I could hypothetically at some point trade for sulfur and crystals. I could to get that library to further down the line, get the upgraded ivory tower, alas. That Delvish town makes perfect sense. That's a catchy name for a desert town. Oh, desert faction. Is that... Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite an obvious move. What could you possibly do to expand the game further? Well, introduce that faction with uh, all those neutral units. Make them not so neutral anymore. At that point you would just have the ghosts and the elementals as neutral forces. Plus, uh, you could recycle the desert background, I guess. But then again, you'd have to create a separate background for the neutral units. Uh, oh, how costly. It's basically nothing I am getting this particular turn. And next turn, I do believe I will be able to get the Cloud Castle. And if I do that, I will not be able to recruit any units. So how about, uncharacteristically, surprisingly enough, shockingly perhaps, how about I do not actually get the Cloud Castle right this turn even though I can? Even though it sounds like the sort of thing you ought to do on autopilot. How about I refuse to get it and acquire it further down the line? For now, just being content with the fact that I can recruit some units for Marini. Since I do want him to get some reinforcements and be on her way. I know that this may seem counterintuitive, but I still think I'll be able to afford the Cloud Castle this particular week.
easily. Oh, look, in the Freeman's Foundry, obviously, you can upgrade your little um, golems. That's quaint. Do I wish to pursue the Santas? I don't know. Let's not. And of course, they are supposed to be an evil faction. Well, fair enough. Well, they were. But yeah, yeah, of course, there's a mod. <sighs> Once again, I stopped myself because I could have said, well, isn't there always? No, there isn't always. There obviously isn't always a mod. Especially for these older titles. Quite often, there isn't going to be a mod because uh, people have moved on. It's only the most legendary of games that actually receive this level of attention. And I guess Heroes of Might and Magic does deserve quite a bit. Quite a bit of love, quite a bit of attention. Alright, there's a pack of Ogre Lords, I believe. A pack is between 10 and 19, as I can see on this side. I don't know, maybe I should put more of an effort into memorizing these things. I do remember the basic few of them, but... Uh, unfortunately, at times the details elude me. What do I actually remember with a high degree of confidence? I do remember that few is between 1 and 4, that Legion is more than a thousand. Those I can immediately recall to mind. Hmm. I do know them in order most of the time, I guess. Or do I? Above few, there's a pack, right? So pack is going to be 5 to 9. Is that the case? No, it's several. Of course it is, and of course. Pack is beyond several, so pack is from 10 to 19, and several is 5 and 9. Sheesh. I've been playing this for so long, and yet... Uh, it's still so much more convenient for me to just look these things up that... Uh, I guess I refuse to memorize them. I could spend the tiniest bit of time and put in the tiniest bit of effort to do so, but I guess I'm unwilling to, to a certain extent. Or I guess I may, might be waiting until it just naturally comes to me. Which it may or may not. Oh great, I get a choice between Diplomacy and Eagle Eye. Let's take Diplomacy, even though I don't think I'll be collecting units from all over the map. Now will I? I don't have the slots. Advanced Diplomacy or Advanced Scouting? Whoa. These are absolutely excellent choices. Okay, let's go with Advanced Scouting. I want to see fall. And of course I get plus one defense. Another Halfling Hall. There are quite a few of those in the area. Quite a few Halflings. I've already added plenty of them to my ever-growing army. Oh, look, a town. A neutral town of Erlequin. Could memorize the names of all of these towns by now. This is the Shire. It is. It is indeed. And we have come to conquer it, which clearly makes us uh, the good guys from the Empire. Obviously. I stand by the assessment. We are clearly the good guys. We are trying to maintain... Con clearly all those, all those rebel scum are the bad guys. They are creating instability in the region. The who do they think they are exactly? Trying to get these legendary artifacts to take over the world? That's not okay. The world is mine. They can't take it over. I mean, the, the world belongs to the Emperor. The good and kind and just Emperor. And a merciful one. Who rules with an iron fist, of course, but then again, that's not that's not bad. It's not bad if you're Lord Iron Fist or someone like that. Nothing wrong with having a fist made of iron, that just means you're, um, you're firm in your decisions and in your convictions. And who wouldn't want to be firm? Do we want things to be doughy and undefined, or would we prefer them to be firm? Of course we'd prefer them to be firm. Let's not be silly about this. So once again, ruling the world with an iron fist isn't necessarily a sign that you're evil. You may be evil, obviously, but uh, you can't tell just based on that. Let's not jump to conclusions. I got a horrible hand in terms of the traits, didn't I? 
scouting and diplomacy not the best of options i would have preferred i know archery but then again you don't necessarily get archery all that often unless you're what the knight and archery is a uh, archery is exquisite it's quite useful as a wizard but uh, alas alas we will not have that this teaches you lightning bolt should you not know it already which Marini does, obviously. Do I want to fight the elves? No. Obviously, I'll show them mercy. Well, I'm a gentle man. Oh, well, woman in this case. Why would I unnecessarily engage in conflict? Alright then. Let's do the usual rounds. Some resources from here, some halflings from there. Pass them over to Mirini. Who needs to pick them up? <laughs> and now we shall go for Eloquin. Of course, we have giants piling up over at New Dawn. And we are nowhere near acquiring the upgraded Cloud Castle because it requires a lot of gems to put it mildly are we actually even generating any gems no we are not we don't have a single gem because we do not control a gem mine not a single is that a third sawmill what are we doing here what are we playing here what is this am i supposed to trade all of my lumber for oh you know what? No, no 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 hold on hold on i take it back i take it back what is that that's another sawmill of course we're in a we're in a verdant huge lush Forest, what would you expect over here? Of course, it's another sawmill. It's just the elven folk trying to utilize the natural resources at their disposal to the best of their ability. Of course, they are going to have plenty of sawmills. They would be fools not to. Hey, I'm I'm fairly convinced the elves are destroying their own environment. In fact, I am not aware of any environmental regulations imposed by the elves on the elves. So, I don't know, I... I don't... Maybe, maybe this is exactly why we need to conquer this place. Maybe... We need to... Put an end to all of this exploitative behavior maybe we need to stop cutting down all those precious trees all right i need a bit more gold in order to be able to upgrade that to a proper castle but i can get a few halflings already and i will pick them up sheesh the fact that this can be upgraded to a proper castle amuses me i didn't expect that to be the case but of course uh, it will it will soon enough I tell you, the elves are destroying their own environment, and quite frankly, they'll be better off under my kind and gentle rule as I impose a couple of uh, regulations that will ultimately benefit everyone. It's absolutely brilliant environmental policies. By the Empire. Alright. What, what do we want? What do we have? What do we need? Presumably I ought to keep on visiting the magical garden. Right, it's day two. I don't think I have... No, I have already visited this one. Of course I have. Once again, memory of a goldfish. Absolutely, every single time. Somehow I have managed to completely forget about the fact that literally last turn I have visited these places, gathered the reinforcements and passed them around. How that manages to repeatedly happen, I have absolutely no clue. Either way, I am not building anything in the other castle, but I am making this. I am making Eloquent into a proper castle. Next up, we will be building the statue and so on. Our next objective is also to desperately try and find a gem mine. Or perhaps we can just uh, strong arm the leprechaun over here into giving us more gems. That would work too. Obviously, we'll also have to upgrade our secondary castle get uh, plenty more types of units and plenty more units out of it plus one to knowledge from the witch doctor's hut and there's a pack of nomads over there that will soon enough turn into a pack of no one 
Nomads, of course, are reasonably mighty. They are not to be underestimated. So let me estimate them properly. And according to my estimations, those nomads are dead. And these guys are, uh, shall we say, on the way out. Unfortunately, the goblins will do absolutely not. That one's on me. That one's on me. I could have protected the halflings. A single halfling has died, which is, of course, a lamentable tragedy. That's highly unfortunate. Oh, here are elf elementals. Lots of them defending the stone lives. Exactly. Hello there. And whose empire is it anyway? I have absolutely no clue. But as far as I'm concerned, as far as I can tell, we are the good guys in all of this. The Emperor is a merciful man, and the forces we are uh, grappling with at this particular point in time appear to be horrifying and oppressive. Well, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily stand by that assertion. Um, but in this particular case, in this particular case, we absolutely are the good guys. Now, you might be under the misapprehension, as may these good folks be under the misapprehension, that they are the good guys, that they are the heroes and all of this, oh, they are defending the homeland. Well, yes, they very well may be, but at the same time, I do have an important mission on my hands. This cannot wait. And uh, I would be perfectly willing to let things slide. I would be perfectly willing to just peacefully pass through the land in order to pursue, find and defeat Krager. The usurper, but at the same time... Oh, right, of course, the other elementals are immune to lightning. It's good to raise skeleton. No, 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 no. See, this is what you get wrong. This is absolutely not the case. No, 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 no. I am, I am against necromancy. I uphold necromancy. And in fact, the whole point of it is that we are to oppose the necromancer king. We are not on his side. He is the ultimate usurper in all of this. So, no, I do not support the living dead. Now, I do understand that some people might consider that hate speech, but at the same time... I do believe this world belongs to the living, and it ought to. <sighs> if only I understood that reference. Is it the Elder Scrolls? It's... I can tell that it's very mainstream, but I can't possibly decipher. Yep, Tamriel is the Elder Scrolls. Damn it! I need, I need to, I need to finally play Morrowind seriously, and then of course move on further down the line. Although you know, at this juncture, <laughs> at this juncture, I genuinely can't tell whether I should or should not begin with, say, Arena, and then move on to Daggerfall, because of course I'm one of those people who insist on doing things in order, in sequence, which is part of the reason I'm actually playing Heroes of Might and Magic 2 right now, instead of you know feasting my eyes upon seven or six. Ooh, Daggerfall was good. Well, you know what they said back in the day when they called it Baggerfall. It was uh, a game of questionable quality, but then again, when you create such grand things, things at such a scale. Daggerfall Unity is what makes it playable. I've seen that on GOG. Oh no. The Empire. Yes, I do recall the Emperor being mentioned in Morrowind. The whole plot of the Mage's Guild quest. Ew, I see. You see, the good part about all of this is that I am perfectly content to wait a few years for Daggerfall Unity to become a... Mature. Whoa! No, 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 no! Hold on, I didn't mean to teleport. Yeah, don't you just hate it when that happens. But since I did anyway, I might as well explore this tiny bit of the island right here. Improve my stats, etc. 
Oh my goodness, Morrowind sounds uh, like a backwater the more I hear about it. Uh, what do we want? Attack, defense, all spell power. I didn't to take spell power, but... Ah, uh, let's shore up deficiencies. I don't have powerful spells. Well, that much anyway. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, if I really wanted to play things and not... No, 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 no. If I decide to go for the Elder Scrolls, that'll be essentially starting... That'll be essentially be starting um, an RPG series. And I can foresee that taking me quite a while to get through. And there are so many other series I wanted to get through earlier on. Oh, there's so much stuff I want to get through anyway. I don't know, at this point I'm leaning towards wizardry or something I will begin with, but... Oh dear, I, I, am not e I am not even going to uh, to begin exploring mods. There's so much content for me to get through without getting into those sorts of things. I mean, I get the motivation, I appreciate that, but at the same time, yeesh. There's just so much stuff out there. I just want to peacefully get through the Heroes of Might and Magic series on a... a In the most straightforward possible way. Just to play through the campaigns of all the games in order. That's it. There's so there are so many mods and there are so many titles. I can't get through all of this. I don't have enough life in me. I don't know. Maybe. Just maybe at some point further down the line. Once I run out of everything else. But you know. People are annoying in this particular way. That they... Just keep making more games for me to get through. Imagine that. Surely they ought to have the decency to stop, but they refuse to. You know, this is all the more motivation for me to just keep on trying. I have to get through as much as I possibly can, damn it! <sighs> I will certainly try. That's why I have to prioritize things properly. Because if I go off playing these sorts of things that... Uh, can take a reasonable while without that much of a payoff. If we can uh, even consider the notion of a payoff in this sort of context. Some of those endeavors might be what I would consider a waste. Ugh. <sighs> I guess I'll just have to uh, really cautiously pick my. Then again, I haven't I haven't made the best of choices. Then the more I think about it, after all, I I did recently make a choice. I have decided to <laughs> I have decided to play alone in the, in the dark of all things, and I regret that decision thoroughly. I mean, I do I? Had I not played it, I would I would have had absolutely no um, no reference point, no no uh, no idea how bad things could possibly get. I could not have anticipated what was there for me to discover, and yet, it was there. Yeah, no kidding, it's an early 3D game, but I figured, okay, okay, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad, right? There are plenty of games that maybe, um, shall we say, um, of uh, questionable... Uh, looks uh, and uh, I do not hold that against them. I can accept all sorts of flaws as long as it's a fulfilling experience, as long as it's nice. The plots of two and three sound ludicrous. Oh dear. Uh, I'm going to have to make an, an episode zero video explaining a number of things on that since I just decided to plunge straight into it for Halloween. <laughs> Which originally was supposed to be a joke to begin with. I figured, oh, I'm going to play something mortifyingly scary. A game <laughs> with early 3D, with 3D from the early 90s. And I thought it would be an absolute mind-blowing classic of a game that just happens to look bad. Oh, how silly I was. Basically everything that could have been bad about that game was. Just everything. 
I don't think I would consider it outright terrible, like a 1 out of 5, but I would certainly call it a 2 out of 5. Maybe it was mind-blowing. Oh, I got the golden bow, people, by the way. I got the golden bow. Golden bow is quite an artifact. It's quite precious, especially if you have an army comprised of units that are ranged. Check this out. The golden bow eliminates the 50% penalty for troops shooting past obstacles. It is the bow, the precious bow. And let's give logistics to Wilfrey, just so that he can have an easier time collecting all of these things. Now, I presumably, presumably, should have used Wilfrey to collect all of those resources on the island, instead of forcing poor old Mirini to do all of that manually. But I didn't! <sighs> I need more crystals. Or do I? What do I want to get? I think I should get the Mage Guild and then the Ivory Towel, which once again costs every single resource under the sun. Is it day 7 already? It actually is, so let's get the Well instead. Well, well, well. And of course, with the way things are, I presumably ought to get a third tier... Well, not, not a third tier hero, a second secondary hero, as I would term it. So, let's get Sarek in the wizard. <sighs> Reminds me of the good old days. Let's wait until tomorrow, recruit all the units, and then... Um, I guess gather all the resources and uh, deliver reinforcements some time down the line. Perhaps I should have just barreled onwards, perhaps I should have just gone north and conquered immediately. But as you may all may not know, I do tend to take my sweet time with basically everything. Oh look, a lot of wolves. Of course, we are in a forest, Arnold, are we not? Oh, poor little wolves. Oh dear, oh dear. Makes me somewhat wistful to look at them, but as a... A subject for another time, is it though? That is not a subject for any time. <laughs> let, not, let me not get into that one. Alright. Let's just pick up the gold and possibly relegate uh, the acquisition of other resources to other heroes. Should I actually do that? I don't know about that. Well, I could hypothetically send uh, Wilfrey over there and pick them up, if I am absolutely, thoroughly disinclined to acquire them via regular means. But I guess Mirini has uh, a job to do, has more important things on her mind and ought to proceed. Hold on. Can't get the Ivory Tower, obviously. But I will get the Mage Guild. I might as well make some progress towards those things. I can't get all the mages and I can't get all the steel golems. Might as well get uh, something out of the leprechaun. Possibly gold, if that happens to be the case, then of course I'll have an easier time recruiting the rest of things. All the rest of units. Ah, fine, let's immediately head on back through the lifts. We'll, free, we'll be sent through the lifts, through here. And we'll, of course, pick up the resources left behind. I should have just picked up the gold with Mirini. But, of course, the principled man that I am, I've decided not to. Right, heading back to the second castle. Let's immediately get the ivory tower. And uh, and let's be confused thoroughly about the state of us. Do I actually have all the mines, or was it just all the resources I picked up on my way? I have actually picked myself up into that. I still do not have a gem mine or a crystal mine. I also have no clue how many castles my foes have because I've decided not to acquire a thieves guild anywhere. Not yet, anyway. Okay, I could hypothetically head through here or I could head through there. And uh, increasingly I get the impression that if I head through here I might just stumble upon the castle of Avalon. Soon enough. Although that doesn't sound like much of a threat now, does it? I think I could take that on. Well, either way, let's uh, play 
say it's safe to an extent. Acquire some more mages and some more golems. And when I say some more golems, I do mean some more golems because I still can't recruit all of them. And let's at least make a good old fashioned college try. Let's attempt to... Yes, let's pick up the gold after I send the reinforcements out. Wrong out of operations yet again. Which seems to suggest that perhaps, perhaps I should take my time and actually consider my moves in this little strategy game. Alright, let's think things through the tiniest of bits this time. First of all, let's have Wilfrey pick up the resources over here. Flag the observation tower to see if there's anything nearby. There isn't. Not really, the entire place is surrounded by water. Basically nothing, but... Ah, yes, of course, let's uh, visit these buildings on the way. Let's flag the gem mine that is oh so precious and appreciated. Here's Dimitri, and he's on his way to the tent. Well, let's not grant him that, shall we? Let's not let him uh, discover the secret passphrase that leads uh, through here. Through another little teleportation device. Let's slay Dimitri instead. Do I have forces strong enough? We are about to find out. Now, of course, as you know, rangers are tier 2 and they pack quite a punch, but thankfully, with the lightning bolt at my disposal, I was able to get rid of quite a few of them. I'm not be able to block them, however, but I will be able to file with my magi before they get the chance to act. Oh, and I will get an opportunity to block them as well. The numbers have been reduced to 8. Which uh, works in my favor quite a bit. All right, then. Let's finish them off. And continue casting spells. Since I do have them at my disposal, and I do have quite a bit of spell power, since I am playing a magic hero over here. A magic-oriented hero. A magic-based hero, whatever you want to call that. Now, of course, there is another possibility. Not that remote, that Dimitri will decide to flee. And since he has gotten so far ahead, he might be carrying quite a few artifacts with him. I wouldn't want him to flee, but I may not have a choice in the matter. Oh, might I? I was correct, he had the Book of Elements, the Ice Cloak, and that's about it. But that is enough for me. Let's pick Scouting an Expert to be able to see even further inland with every single step, and let's uh, behold the castle of Avalon and Ambrose defending it. As soon as I receive the reinforcements, I might as well conquer that castle, might I not? Now, of course, there is stuff to the south that I ought to pick up soon enough. For no other reason than the fact that it is there, and thus I desire it. I also do get the impression that uh, my foes at the disposal have uh, a pair of castles. One castle over here and another castle over there in the corner. That would be the simplest and most reasonable explanation of what is going on in front of my eyes. Now, of course, I do have uh, the advantage of uh, having the artifact, having it from the very start of the game. And uh, I will break on through and receive reinforcements, so I will have a fresh batch of units. And an army consolidated. But uh, other than that, I guess I'm on my own. I might as well swing everything in my favor as early on as possible. What does the Book of Elements do? I, it uh, allows you to summon more elementals. By the way, I need to write this down. Since we have established, I do have the memory of a goldfish most of the time. So the password is Hammer. It's hammer time. Now then. The Book of Elements, as I mentioned, yes. The Book of Elements doubles the effectiveness of all your summoning spells. So technically not just the elemental summoning spells by definition, but uh, all the elemental spells and only elemental summoning spells in practice. 
Because there aren't any other summoning spells in the game, at least as far as I'm aware. Oh look, a magic garden. Might as well pick up some resources. Gems or gold? It's gems. Gems it is! Let's get some more defense. I don't know. It really doesn't matter all that much at this point. And now, of course, acquiring anything else is going to be tremendously expensive. Might as well get the marketplace and then trade for crystals so that I can get uh, the library to upgrade the ivory tower over here. I might want that. Well, if that is the well, if that is what I want, I might as well get the, the library in the original castle. Although, there is a downside to that, you know? After all, I could hypothetically take unupgraded mages from the castle of New Dawn, transport them all the way to Erlequin, and then back at Erlequin, first of all, um, upgrade them and then recruit upgraded mages. It's something I could do, although I don't think that'll necessarily... I don't think that'll necessarily prove to be necessary. I think it's too much effort for too little payoff. Fine, let's get additional reinforcements from this castle. I am stalling here because Mirini hasn't actually opened the passageway over here. And I do want to head north using the most direct path available to me. I can't recruit that single additional ball. Hold on, let's head on south with Mirini. This is an endless cult of uh, all, I believe. Do I want the cult of all right now, or do I want to open the path? I want the cult. Actually, let's get uh, the spell first. It's Death Wave. And now let's get the card. An ammunition card in the middle of an old battle... Wait, what, what? An ammunition card in the middle of an old battlefield catches your eye. Inspection shows it to be in good working order, so you take it along. What? The ammo card provides endless ammunition for all your troops that shoot. Okay, show of hands, how many of you people have actually struggled because you did not have enough ammo on your troops in this game? Seriously, when does that happen? Does it ever? Oh, by the way, you uh, were mentioning all those red bits. Here are all those red bits. This is kind of flagged in red. So is this, and so is that. A long siege, it, it can happen, huh? I guess. I guess in principle it can happen, but... Uh, once again, in my experience, it's such a rare occurrence. It is so incredibly unlikely. But it might as, might as well not. I guess if people wanted it to matter... Uh, to any extent, really, then they absolutely should have uh, just lowered the ammunition threshold. They should have uh, had a lot less ammunition on all the units. Uh, check this out. How much ammo do the mages have? 12 shots. That's 12 rounds. And uh, there we go. 12 shots on the halflings as well. Well, certainly possible in theory. Once again, mostly inapplicable in practice. <laughs> 12 rounds. But again... <laughs> The only circumstances under which this would make sense... A lot more common in Heroes 3. Yeah, I guess it does make sense, because uh, you need to have a situation where the attacker doesn't have that much advantage. You need to be in the sort of scenario where you just keep bashing one another with foam, so to speak. You keep shooting one another with nerf guns and so on. Essentially, you need to have significantly more defense than you have offense. Wait, can I type literally anything over here? Oh, let's not try that. Now, of course, all the kids these days would probably, when asked this sort of question, say just, yes, yes, I want the units. No! I have no idea what that would do, but I'm not about to find out. I've had this game crash my stream and my computer twice already. I am not about to exper- Wait, what? Oh my goodness, is it, the, is it the naughty halflings again? As you enter the small clearing, you see a familiar figure talking to a group of halflings and soldiers. You, you, stay a you stay a while and listen to his speech. 
The time to throw off these chains of tyranny is now. We must strike at the heart of her empire and destroy the evil that she has brought to our land. Uh -huh, see? They speak of the the evil uh, empress of the sorceresses, of course. Not my kind and, and generous emperor. No, no, no. As the old elf finishes speaking... Is that, is that an elven mutiny? As the, old, as the old elf finishes speaking, he gets up from his mossy seat and uh, once again blends into the woods with incredible grace. Clearly, clearly that's mutiny against the sorceresses. That's what's happening here. Not against our wonderful empire. It's, it's the other empire, people. It's the other empire. The Medusa has four shots. I think that's enough. Wait, wait, hold on. No, 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 no. No, you clearly mean the Medusa from Heroes of Might and Magic 3, because obviously the Medusa over here is a melee unit. <laughs> yeah, it's like having a conversation about the Queen from StarCraft 1 and StarCraft 2. If you're not sure what you're talking about, you're not going to have a productive conversation. <laughs> oh, and I just barely got the orchard on day 7. All right, and since, yeah, since I got all of that, oh dear. It's a never-ending cycle, is it? Is it not? Because obviously, since we have just hit day one, there's a fresh new batch of reinforcements available, and I might as well figure, hold on, let me get all of those reinforcements, deliver them to Marini, and then, and only then, let's head north and conquer. No, 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 I think the time is now. I think I absolutely should head on over there and conquer Avalon. Snatch it from the grasp of Tyro, Ambrose, and Lord Kilburn. I hypothetically could equip Marini with a more powerful army, but... This will do. At the very tail end of the last stream, I've decided that I will send her on her merry way to go ahead and conquer the castle of Avalon, I believe. With all the secondary heroes uh, doing the best to uh, to Logos knows what. I know what they are exactly supposed to do. We have a starting castle of New Dawn all the way over here. Are there any reinforcements that one can get from that castle? Yes, there most certainly are, and they have been completely neglected. Well, in that case, I might as well take Sarakin, and instead of sending him all the way to the Halfling Hall to try and deliver reinforcements from there, I may eventually get some units from New Dawn with him. We've cleared out this little island from all the resources that were there, so I don't have to worry about that, at least all that much. The Red Traveler's Tent presumably has been visited. Uh, what could the password possibly have been? Can I remember from last week? Was it, uh, Alma? My notes say hammer. So I'm going to assume hammer. Wilfrey over here hypothetically could try and deliver some reinforcements to Marini, but unfortunately he doesn't have the movement points. I think I'll put them on the merry way. I don't think there's much I can do, considering the fact that I don't have the gold to do it with. All right then. The enemy heroes are not particularly horrifying. I should be able to deal with them quite easily. I will not stray, I will not pick up any of these resources along the way, I will just go straight for the jugular. And how straight for the jugular is this supposed to be? Should I pick off the nearby heroes? I think I will. Alright then. Let's send Sarakin on his way. Uh, since he's here anyway, he might as well pick up the stray halflings, visit the water wheel and so on. Go away sound effect. It's somewhat annoying that uh, these little flourishes freeze up your entire game. But they do. They unfortunately do. They stop you from doing anything. You have to wait for them to dissipate, so to speak. 
This is the current situation, as far as the world is concerned. There are just a couple of balls left. And alongside them, steel golems that I can possibly recruit and then deliver to Mirini. It's far off. Yes, yes, it most certainly becomes uh, simply more annoying rather than more difficult. But uh, there have been some improvements in uh, the F-Heroes 2 um, remake, I guess. That altered AI's behavior, possibly making um, campaign missions um, different. Not necessarily more difficult, but uh, that is something I will explore in future campaigns, I guess. But yes, the baseline behavior of AI is just atrocious. The map-up is just absolutely annoying. But it makes the behavior of AI more predictable and uh, certainly easier to deal with. There's the disrupting ray, which the AI loves to use if it only knows it. But yes, if you can re rely on the AI splitting up into numerous groups and then sending its heroes all the way around it's going to spend plenty of gold on all of those heroes we can have gold there's a nice neat little gold mine over there for me to pick up but i'll visit the observation tower first if it splits up units so much then you can just divide and conquer them away there's the castle of brownstone i think it might be more prudent for me to conquer it first and then and only then proceed with the acquisition of the castle of avalon well you know the siege of avalon which I believe is another game altogether. I would love to deliver these reinforcements, I would love to flag additional maps, but alas, alas, I don't think I necessarily can afford to send uh, Wilfrey all the way up there. Partly because it would be a risk to his life, and partly because uh, he's also got other business to attend to. He had to pick up all of those... Um, all those things near his castle, and... Uh, I'm running out of explanations, really. It's not like he's got that much to do. He does have batches of reinforcements to pick up, but he's literally just done that, so that's not an explanation I can get away with. I have all the mines except for a crystal mine, and I do believe one of these is going to be a crystal mine, isn't it? There's a crystal mine right there. I could just recruit another hero, and presumably I'll recruit one in Brownston. Soon enough. Alas, alas, it's unfortunate that I don't have these crystals that I oh so desperately desire to be able to build the library, future mage guilds, and so on. But uh, I'll get on that soon enough. For now, let's siege up Brownston. <sighs> this is going to be very basic. All right, let's start out by casting a lightning bolt, getting rid of. Uh, all the range units? Not quite. That would have been a lie for me to say, but uh, that was close enough. There were only four archers remaining after like, I got rid of the rangers. The rocks got paralyzed, which doesn't bother me the slightest of bits, considering the fact that the enemy forces have been more than decimated by now. All that remains are the 288 peasants, which shall die right now. I have lost a couple of halflings, but other than that, I'm just fine. Spell power plus one. Luck or ballistics? Let's uh, get more luck. Is there anything of note in Brownston? There's a third tiered mage guild. Quite a few buildings from which to recruit units. So dwellings, as they are called in this game. Should I visit and replenish mana points? Is there much of a point to doing so? I'm tempted to move to the side. Let a hero out. Say Myra the wizard. Uh, all I could recruit Maximus the knight and he can henceforth have all the knight's units on him. Well, if I were to recruit Myra, I could possibly transfer all the few units you get baseline alongside her to my primary hero. An old knight. They do not discriminate over there. Why should they? Let's get rid of all the peasants. Let's leave them behind. And of course, let's upgrade the archers. Oh, does he have a spellbook? If he doesn't, I am going to pay for one for him. And I'm going to send him 
and a little flagging spree, that's what he's there for, he will flag all of these structures. I don't think I have visited the mercenary camp, I have not, I will do so soon enough. For now I'll leave Myra over here, she will learn the spells, and alongside that she will replenish her mana points before next turn. Unfortunately I do not have enough crystals to get the cathedral, but I could hypothetically get the jousting arena and get some um, knights units for the future, I don't know. Might as well get it, but I have it and not need it, then need it and not have it, as they say. I just got some gems for free. I just applied pressure to the leprechaun. And let them freely flow. I could recruit all the units that I've left behind over here. Like those silly little halflings and so on. I still haven't upgraded the ivory tower. Guess what? I need more crystals. Once again, I could trade for them. There's nothing stopping me. I have two marketplaces. And all I need are two more crystals. It's not that much of a problem. I do have spell wood as well. I think it's just uh, unreasonable for me to refuse to do that. So let's trade, get the library, and soon enough next turn I'll be able to upgrade the tower, the ivory tower. Since the ivory tower's upgrade no longer requires all the resources, just wood and all. It's the library that's expensive. Alright then, now obviously we can't get the next tier of the mage guild, but uh, I guess that's acceptable to an extent. I might as well upgrade the Jousting Arena, even though I'm not getting any of these units. And I won't be anytime soon. By the way, these are the only units left over here, obviously. Because I just got the structure. <laughs> uh, suggesting that uh, there were no units there when I got the castle itself. The Alchemist's Tower, from what I have been told, uh, allows you to remove a cursed artifact, so I do not need to visit that. What I do need to do, however, is uh, deal with all the stray heroes in the area because Maximus's very life is at stake. I guess I'll have to send him north otherwise he will get captured by Tyro. And I might as well send good Myra to deal with Tyro. I could hypothetically take the straightforward path to Avalon but no. Let's try to deal with Tyro. Meanwhile, I will reposition my secondary units, not delivering reinforcements, not really doing much of use. Sorry, wrong castle. And I do not quite have enough gold to get the upgrade to the, uh, to the ivory tower, but that's arguably okay. At least that's okay for now. I could recruit all the stray units here and there, but of course, that way I'll be depleting my coffers even further. Let's wait for more gold instead, and next turn, get that upgrade. Now, of course, upgrading all the mages to Alk mages is going to be an annoying process, but then again, if there's one thing this game is about, it's annoying processes and sticking to them. I'm somewhat puzzled. Should I conquer Avalon right this turn or should I go after Tyra? I think I'll go after the castle. Better I get it now than let them hold on to it. And then, in effect, possibly gather more units for the down the line. Might as well unleash a lightning bolt on the rangers so I don't have to worry about them anymore. And now in a couple of shots, I should be able to dispatch the remaining units. These guys have already moved, and these guys have very low speeds, so I'll send the rocks to attack. The Swordsmen. The Halflings get lucky, they deal double damage, and away go the Pikemen. Lovely. It absolutely was! 
It's by the same studio that uh, is uh, making the remake of uh, Silent Hill 2. If I recall correctly. Which I think I am. Mind blowing. Unless I've made some grand mistake, but I don't think I have. No, I think it's Bluebell team. I think they're literally around the corner in this very city of mine. <laughs> Resident Evil clone. Well, well, you say you remember our Blur Witch game, but uh, you presumably remember the three Blur Witch Project games. You may just be remembering the first one. There's the Blur Witch Project 1, 2, and 3. With 2 actually having an important uh, historical tie to me, namely 2 being the game that ultimately convinced me I do not want to play a translated game anymore ever in my entire life. It was just that bad. I was familiar with the concept of a blind idiot translation, but what I have witnessed in the second Blood Witch Project game exceeded any and all expectations of awfulness. It was a translation so bad, you presumably had to have made it essentially on purpose. Intentionally bad. Done with the Nocturne engine, indeed, but... Three games were made in parallel using the exact same engine. Three parts of the series. One of them dealing with Elspeth Holiday in Burkittsville. The second one dealing with uh, the history of an old soldier back in the day. And another one dealing with um, a witch hunter even further back in the past. The very witch hunter which Elspeth Holiday crosses paths with in the treacherous mists of the forest. It's basically impossible to get these games now, isn't it? You can't buy them anywhere, they're not on GOG, they're not on Steam, they're not available anywhere out there, aside from presumably some collector's copies on eBay or something like that. All right, I had a job to do to get the upgrade to the ivory tower. There we go. I've considered playing Nocturne and no the more I think about it right now, the more I realize that uh, it may not be the worst of experiences. After all, I'm used to a static camera by now. I presumably could cope with it. The red barrier is right there. And there are lifts, slightly glowing, presumably teleporting you to yet another part of the map. Also resources are scattered around. Is there anything else in the area? There is a windmill over here. Some stuff to reveal over there, but presumably these are blocked off. <laughs> presumably you can't just go through here, right? There wouldn't be a path amidst the trees, that would be rather foolish, although... I will not discount any possibility in this game. Oh, let's see, it's day six. I ran with Maximus all the way over here to equip him with an army, but there's basically no army available as of yet. Poor Maximus. He might just die. We shall see. Tyro is on his way to stay him. Lord Kilburn is right here. So, if I go after Tyro... To desperately try and save Maximus, I uh, will inadvertently let the castle be recaptured. I ought not to do that. So I guess I will leave uh, Maximus' life in jeopardy. <laughs> Hang in there, buddy, because I am slaying Lord Kilburn. Let's do this. Let's start out by attacking the Paladins. And down to a single one they go. Of course, the AI loves the Disrupting Ray. Let's go the World of Hall. I have absolutely no idea what that is. Is it a particular game? A website? A series? What would that be? Is it modern? Is it indie? Is it uh, an absolute classic that I have somehow missed out on? PC console. 
I would look it up, but uh, alt tabbing has its price, <laughs> as we have seen last time. Another thing to add to the ever expanding list. All right then. I will look into. Oh, I'll, I'll add it to the list. Who knows? I might. Uh, I might possibly. I uh, played for next year's unique Polish experience. World of Horror. World of Horror. I don't happen to have it on the list already, do I? Unless it's an MMO, a reasonably modern MMO. Uh, that, then that's not what I'm thinking of. Mm. I probably haven't seen it before. Although, once again, anything is possible at this stage. I've gone through so many tiles at this stage. And of course, sometimes verifying whether something is made by published devs or not can be rather tricky, as uh, they may be a smidgen furtive about the entire operation. It's a roguelike horror game! Okay, now you're speaking my la- Is it actually a roguelike or is it a roguelite? Oh my god, I'm, I'm tempted to look it up as we speak, but uh, I have a job to do. Uh, by the way, the bad news is that um, Maximus is about to get, be attacked uh, and uh, there's basically nothing I can do. Nothing I can do to save him. And the next step, of course, is going to be crossing the barrier over here. There we go, castle defense. Although I might actually hold, considering the odds. Look at this. A proper roguelike. That's certainly something that should appeal to me then. I'll gladly look into it. And just like that, we are only left with melee units. I'll not cast Bloodlust quite yet. I'll let the enemy come to me. We do have the ramparts or fortifications. So I don't have to worry about... All of that collapsing on me anytime soon. There we go. Let's just wait it out. It's rather silly, but uh, hey, if it works... We have survived the onslaught, losing only three rangers. And the red player has been vanquished, that was the final hero in the final castle. It is now the week of the rabbit. Alright, let's check the Thieves Guild and see what competition we have left. Green player has the most powerful forces, that is warring, that is also the wrong guild. But there we go, that's the green player with a new fangled hero. Zero points of attack, I see. That's not particularly horrifying. Ah yes, and also early access. I tend to leave those to mature. Most towns, but I have more castles, more heroes, more gold in the treasury. I'm doing rather well, comparatively. Oh, and by the way, I will be able to get an upgrade to the Cloud Castle very, very soon, as long as I actually spend my resources wisely instead of uh, squandering them. And since this area is now perfectly safe, because there are absolutely no foes left, I might as well flag everything, visit every single building and so on. Nineteen percent complete. You know what? I'll wait for them to leave early access. I'm not that desperate. I have the time. <sighs> Should I actually cross the red barrier and uh, pick up those resources first? No, I'll just flag everything first. Though mark my words, I will check it out soon enough. I'll have a gander at it. I might not necessarily play it, but uh, I'll have a look. It sounds absolutely wonderful. 
halflings that we picked up from here and from the... And then there's, of course, the magic garden over there. Waiting until next turn. And in my primary castle, we are getting an upgrade to another castle. Now we have a castle within the castle and I can recruit 13 titans. Glorious. And if I am to play that game for, uh, say, Unique Polish Experience 2023, then I still have about a year for the game to mature. I don't have to have a stab at it quite yet. There's absolutely no rush. Oh, by the way, something I seem to have completely forgotten is the fact that there also is a red burial over here leading to stone lifts. And for all I know, this burial over here leads to that burial over there. Leaving me completely stranded. In which case, how exactly am I supposed to cross the green burial? Hmm. Peculiar. Do I want more attack for Maximus? Does it matter? I don't think it does. Well, let's get him more attack anyway. Might as well. Ah, yes, and there's another halfling hole over there. And, of course, the water wheel. Pum, 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 pum. Over here, we don't even have the basic cloud castle. How shameful. But I guess I didn't have resources for everything, now did I? Now, Maximus can visit the windmill on his own. And of course, I could use him to deliver reinforcements, but since he's already got Knight's units, I don't think that would be the way to go. Hmm. <sighs> Fine, let's flag the sawmill. I was debating one of two options. I could have gone southwest, converged, got the units from my secondary heroes, or I could have continued exploring instead. Could have, um... Acquired more resources, unlocked the gate, and so on. I think I'll go for the gate. Hero oh dear. Right, let's try to get those uh, wonderful titans. That's going to take a while, considering how prohibitively expensive they are. But I'll get there in the end. Since I am generating quite a bit of gold with every passing turn. And if I need to, I can always trade for resources. Alright, let's go for the gate. And what shall Maximus do? Nothing of use, I see. Mm -hmm. Still need the library for this, which I will be able to get the very next turn. But of course, that's, that delays my ability to um, get the Cloud Castle in time soon. But then again, if I get the Cloud Castle, I need to wait until I upgrade Cloud Castle. The more I think about it, the more I realize that I presumably you should take units from Erlequin and cult them off to the south to upgrade them. And by that I mean get giants and upgrade them to titans, even though that's awfully expensive. And it would both take time and resources. I think it might be cheaper to actually wait for me to be able to get titans over there. The red spots also disappear from the map. Indeed! It's quite astonishing, isn't it? Because they were marking off something unremarkable. <laughs> As in, they were over the underlaying, I guess, my uh, own mines and such, and now they're gone. They didn't signify absolutely anything back then. And now they're gone, so, um. <laughs> there's faulty logic at play here. This never should have happened. And the fact that it does is just, uh. A shameful reminder, I guess, that, uh, that coding is as much of a science as it is an art. Okay, I've looked this one up a moment ago. Mm, 
It's not sword armor shield. It was something else entirely. Entirely. Ah, uh, come on, Vestin. Come on, Vestin. Oh, not senile. Come on. What could it have possibly been? Can I actually come up with it before I look it up? It's really short. Uh, I do remember. I do remember the note saying red, and then I've completely ignored what was further on down the line. To the right of it. Red password is what? Uh, it's hammer. Red. Hammer. Simple association. Hammer. How could I have forgotten? As you speak about the glowing barrier, yada yada yada. Barrier's gone. So at the beginning of the game tells you that you should take advantage of the conflict between the knights and the sorceresses. But they literally can't reach each other, and the knight can only enter into conflict with you. I guess they're just sending passive-aggressive messages between one another or something. Kelly, the pigeons, and so on. Those, the green traveler's tent. Tell you what, if I go through the lifts, I probably end up sped out on this side. And by the way, the fact that the map is, uh, is connected in this bizarre non-Euclidean way means that I can easily deliver reinforcements to my primary hero. That pleases me to no end. Okay, fine. Maybe it pleases me to some end. Maybe there will be an end to the degree to which I am pleased, but... At the same time, it is pretty neat nonetheless. Because that means that I can just walk over there and uh, get my precious little titans. After which point, I'll go right back in, pop out over here, open the green barrier with the new password I am about to acquire, and then I'll go for the, the necromancers. And that'll be presumably the end of this silly little mission. I love it when a plan comes together. Is there anything I want to get? No, because I don't have the gold. What am I What am I even considering right now? There's basically nothing I can do because I don't have the resources. All right, short-term memory exercise over here. Short-term memory exercise. I will be given one password. I will write it down because I have zero trust in myself and my memory, but I will try to memorize it before I use it in about 10 or 20 seconds. Can I actually manage that? The password, the keyword is arrow. You know, like the arrow theorem, that if you choose that you prefer B over A, and then A over C, and then and so on, then you can never democratically pick anyone? Arrow's impassibility theorem states that clear community-wide ranked preferences cannot be determined by converting individuals' preferences from a full ranked voting electoral system. <sighs> gotta remember this one, gotta remember this one. Political philosophy. The, uh... Arrow's Impossibility Theorem. Oh, goddammit, how do you call the thing? It was called Arrow's Impossibility Theorem. Either way, it's Arrow, yes. It's not com is it commutiveness? Non-commutiveness of choices? Uh, I would have to look it up. A basic mathematical term. Thwarting me. How pathetic. But yes, obviously, arrow, arrow. The best way to memorize something is to use mnemotechnics. I would associate arrow to an elf and and uh, the elf to the color green. Yeah, I'm just I'm just messing about. I obviously I'm going to memorize arrow. It's completely trivial. But at the same time, at the same time, I might as well mention the arrow theorem. Because that's one of the few things I recall that are at least moderately fancy and possibly interesting for anyone. As opposed to, you know, the the utter, I believe, dirge would be a nice term to describe what is uh, transpiring over here. Of getting through this level on its own. <sighs> Alright, let's walk through the lifts, see where I get spat out right here. And the password for that one was Hammer. I don't have the goal to recruit anything, once again, which goes to show that if you actually focus on something and make the conscious effort to remember it, then you're going to. 
But of course, if you get distracted or if you figure there are more important things in the world and then remembering a given thing, then you are not, obviously. Which would beg the question as to why I didn't think that the password for me to memorize was an important thing. But alas, alas, that uh, seems to have been the conclusion since I did not keep it in mind. No, did I? It was not committed to memory. Maybe I've experienced a memory leak. I've allocated just too much. Didn't clear things out. I've ran out of memory. I've strained my resources, failed to manage them properly. Like those silly Pokemon that can only learn four moves. What am I even supposed to do in these circumstances? Seriously, what am I supposed to do? I can't quite deliver reinforcements to Marini yet. I can wait until next turn, but that's not going to be... ...that much better, now is it? Hmm. I don't have the units from this castle ready quite yet. The mages over here have not been upgraded. And I don't have all the titans from here either. Dreadful. Just atrocious. Alright, maybe not. I don't actually need those titans. I don't need any titans and I'll still manage to get rid of green. But uh, I guess... Uh, I guess I like to catastrophize. Oh, is it literally day one? It's day one. <laughs> well then. This is the current situation. And uh, I don't think I can really improve the current situation. This is what Mirini shall get. A whopping eight titans. She'll have to make do with that. Oh, and of course, uh, I'll exchange the uh, the upgraded magi for the unupgraded ones. But she'll still do fine, won't she? The more I think about it, the more I realize that I presumably ought to be on my way as far as this castle is concerned. Because the only way I'm going to deliver reinforcements is uh, if I immediately dart to the northwest. Oh, you know, I could just give up on the entire endeavor. I don't know anymore. I still want to get more attack for Marini. From uh, that silly little structure over here, the mercenary camp. So I might as well buy myself a smidgen more time by doing that. However, no, I don't have enough gold ending the turn right now. I will recruit a couple more units in the secondary castle. Upgrade the tower over here to get more arc mages. We'll mostly focus on those ranged units, at least as much as I can. At this stage, it would make perfect sense for me to just trade resources. Also makes perfect sense for me to collect resources from all over the map. After all, I do have free units. Mercenaries take gold to hire. But they teach those skills for free. That is a good point, indeed. You just visit them. Maybe, maybe, instead of, uh, you know, risking their lives every step of the way, maybe they should open a consulting firm. That would be nice. But I guess they just need to brush up on the marketing skills and so on. They need a better business plan. They need a proper manager. They have the skills, they have the abilities, but uh, they're just not applying themselves. They could do so much better. All right, plus one attack. <sighs> now or never. What do I have left? A couple of rocks. And uh, all the steel golems I can get. All the steel golems money can buy. That's it. That's all of it. And I'm sticking with this. Final answer. I 
I already hate what I'm about to do, but I'm about to do it anyway for obvious reasons. It's just the way to go. Let's... Do the stables buff a single hero or all the heroes? Eh. Presumably just a single hero, but who knows. Yep, as far as I can tell... Just a single hero. Well, anyway, I am going to pass these units over to Maximus. Who, in turn, is going to head north and pass them over to Mirini. <sighs> Who, in turn, will not have to move, but will instead just head for the green... Burial. One protected by wrong hero. One protected by the passphrase, which is arrow. As you approach the burial, you see the old elf you helped free! This time, however, you see that he is wearing a cape of fine weave and a wooden crown on his head. He sees your forces and says, take this sword and with it strike down Draconia and help free my people! The old elf then strides regally into the woods. I got the dragon sword, which increases my attack skill by three. Bring me all the way up to eleven. Now this one, meaning of course the attack skill, goes all the way up to 11. Alright, and Maximus, get your units. There we go, that's glorious. Why is he culting? Oh goodness. He's still carrying those peasants, meaning that uh, he's significantly slowed down because of the low speed. And I have not noticed this until now. But never mind any of that, who cares? Can't get the Cloud Castle over here. The Cloud Castle over there is irrelevant. I don't know, I could, re I could continue recruiting Titans, none of this matters. Although notably, notably, I can still de deliver reinforcements through the lifts. All I need to do is pick them up over here, bring them through the lifts, and bring them to Marini. Yeah, all in more dire circumstances, ghosts to be. Yeesh. Nothing quite as horrifying as having so many peasants under your control and then seeing them stripped of their existence and turned into ghosts. They buried the souls into nothing. I did remember the password. Incredibly, unbelievably enough. Okay. Here's the thing, I could chase after Zam, or I could choose what's beyond door number two. Take the old mine and let Zam chase after me. What do I do with Wilfrey? Oh, Wilfrey, I will send Wilfrey to collect more halflings. Obviously. Can't ever get enough of them. Should I even equip a secondary hero with knight's units? It sounds like such a pointless exercise. I don't think I even ought to bother at any point. All right, Cloud Castle, I would need six small gems. But I can just buy them, can't I? Just straight up buy them and then get the Cloud... No, I can't because I don't have enough gold. Well, I could just buy it, right? No, let's not do that. It's day se actually, it's day seven. Let's actually do that. How much gold do I need? 12.5k There we go, Cloud Castle Acquired Might as well trade some more for gems because I want to get those titans soon enough. 
Possibly. I don't know. I think the forces I have on Mirani will suffice, but who knows. So we of the lizard. Meanwhile, Zam is still over there. Not a kill in the world. He's letting me conquer all of this freely. I don't know how I feel about that. I will presumably just get South Mail and... Uh, and then go after Zam. Fine. Let's take the town. And if anyone wants to try and reconquer it, I will gladly slay them in the process. Lightning Bolt on the elves. Finish them off. Same goes for the sprites, and now only the dwarves remain. Attack the dwarves, possibly losing your precious little lives. But no, I have too much defense. None of this matters, no losses. And I have self mail. Might as well go after Zam now. Which makes it all the more evident I don't actually need those reinforcements. I am wasting my time doing this. It's just OCD, pure and simple. Oh look, I'm going after Zam, but here's Draconia! That's the queen! Okay, let's take a slight detail, fine. I will slay Draconia now, and then I'll deal with all the cleanup. Presumably once I slay Draconia, the mission should be over, right? It would make perfect logical sense. Will it, though? We are about to find out. Look at all those enslaved elves. Double damage, reducing the number to 70. They shoot twice, though. And they slay... A single titan will go down, right? All the titans are left standing. I repeat, all the titans are left standing. Every single one of them. They're fine. They've never been better. One rock has died, though. To the dwarves, of course, not to the elves. Once again, all the titans are still alive. <sighs> oh, and of course, an elemental stone to finish things off, which uh, gets resisted by the dwarves. After which point, obviously the queen decides to flee, so I don't get the satisfaction of slaying her. Fair enough. It's not over yet. But soon enough it will be. Alright, what do we have here? What are we working with here? Can get some more units. Elemental Storm was so utterly annoying. Yeah, yeah, fancy that. I knew about the combination of Black Dragons and uh, Armageddon or Elemental Storm, but I haven't considered the Humble Dwarves. But obviously they're gonna resist it. <laughs> so yes, you could hypothetically try that, although there is a distinct chance of failure. But then again, if you feel sufficiently lucky, you might as well try that. <sighs> now what do I do? Do I actually... Get the upgrade to the Cloud Castle over here, trading away resources desperately. Or do I just wait for more gold? I can choose uh, none of those things, hypothetically. Whatever, let's go after them. There's a huge disparity be between uh, the expansiveness of my plans and the reality of the sort of difficulties I'm facing. Oh no! Some damage has been dealt. Two Archmagi have died. And of course, the enemy has cowardly fled. Right, now let's flag the gazebo. <sighs> Any actual reinforcements? What am I doing here? Visit this, get the halflings, yada yada yada. Yes, they have advanced spells, but... Uh, even so, that's not dealing much damage, now is it? They're chipping away at me, but uh, it's largely meaningless. It just glances off, so to speak. There's Jam over there. Draconia. Strikes again. Is there actually any more territory for me to discover? Is there anything meaningful over there? I don't think there is. There's a skull cap. Granting me either resistance or immunity to mind-controlling spells. 
I don't need that skull cap. Let's move. I don't need a skull cap, I don't need the reinforcements, I don't really need anything. I need to end the turn. <sighs> Slay gem, retake the town. Look at them dividing the forces. Annoying, if mildly. That's going to end poorly! That's a parting elemental storm, finishing her off. Do I get any artifacts? I do lose quite a few units. Which pleases me significantly less than all the previous things. I do not want to uh, ultimately lose because all that damage starts adding up. It would take a reasonably long while for it to actually add up to anything meaningful, but still, I do not want that to happen. <laughs> All right, 20 gems in order to get the upgraded Cloud Castle. I can acquire those gems. And upgrade the castle. There we go. And the rest, of course, I could just trade for gold, and I presumably ought to. I'm not going to get additional mage gills, anything like that. Might as well trade for gold immediately, get all the titans and so on, and then deliver them. Okay, that's about as much as I can get, which is fine. Yes. <sighs> I'll wait, recruit all the remaining units, and then... Heading off to deliver the reinforcements. Let's get South Mill back under our control. Done. Mysticism of Ballistics, let's take Ballistics. Might as well. We want to conquer. There's the Castle of Alamal, which we will. Conquer shortly, you cautiously ride through the trees, looking out for enemy assaults, when suddenly the old elf is beside you. Your quest is almost at an end, my friend. All that remains is for you to lay siege to these last few castles. The fate of my people rests upon your final battles here. May the gods be with you as well. He turns to leave, but you ask him his name before he is gone. Over his shoulders he is leaving, he says. I am Milthanus, King of the Elves. Glorious. All right, then. Plenty more units remain for me to recruit. Oh, uh, let's see now, but I can't exactly get the balls after I don't have slots for them. So might as well replace them with the golems, there we go, so that's everything, and I will send my reinforcements on the merry way. I don't think they'll ever reach the intended destination, but uh, I've done my best. Last few castles, he said. Alright, let's lay siege to the castle of Alamal, and then they'll have to go through me if they want to retake it, which is the way I like it. Unless the enemies have dimensioned or something as silly as that, as long as you put yourself between them and their destination, they can't just outrun you and be annoying that way. Now I see the sprites have decided to remain indoors! And now they'll remain dead. Down the unicorns go, no losses have been had, and the castle of Alamal is all mine, alongside all of its numerous spells, including Mass Slow and Mirror Image. All the buildings have been erected over here. Are there any units for me to recruit? Well, yes, arguably. Do I want full phoenixes instead of, I don't know, about 300 halflings? No. No, I do not. Let's head down there and just uh, slay all the remaining heroes. 
Oh, and of course, desperately try to deliver reinforcement, which will never actually make the way over there. But I might as well try. Might as well pay lip service to the idea that these reinforcements will eventually get there. Even though I know in my heart of hearts that they never actually will. Oh, look. The enemy heroes spread out. Fine, let's take care of Luna with her several phoenixes. Nine of them, in fact. The phoenixes get priority. And now the phoenixes die to a lucky hit from the titans. Down the phoenixes go, no artifacts acquired. Away goes Luna. Fine, let's head back in. Try to deliver reinforcements. As far as this castle is concerned, anything else I have to recruit? Yes, plenty of titans, but of course, of course, that is prohibitively expensive. We've been over this one. However, as prohibitively expensive as that may be, I can trade away my resources and uh, might just... Yes, allow me to recruit one more titan. How marvelous. Seven titans remaining, one archmage, 33 steel golems and 50 rocks. Dear oh dear. Well, you know what? I can always come back and recruit the rest of them further down the line. Let's send reinforcements right now. I don't think they'll ever make it though in time anyway, but uh, if they are, if they are to make their way over there in time, then they need to be sent out at the earliest. All right. On you go. The reinforcements are on the way. Might as well put Maximus in a castle. He'll be no good to me anyway. Here's the castle of Solpigol, which as far as I have heard is the f the castle you start out if you play Might and Magic 1. You start out in, rather. There are two heroes over here, including Draconia, the Usurper Queen, there's Dimitri, there's Zam. Do I want to deal with them or do I want to just slay Draconia? Actually, let's slay Draconia because if I do that she will not be able to flee since she's in a castle right now. She's got more phoenixes and I've got titans, but that's fine. Oh! That's reasonably wise. A mirror image on the phoenixes who get to act early. What's the radius of meteor shower? I guess we're about to find out. Alright. It's respectable. I have not yet lost a single titan. I have lost rocks, but that's okay. Ah, the disrupting ray. Good times, good times indeed. Of course, casting spells on the dwarves is not the smartest of ideas, but that's okay. The dwarves are there anyway. I have lost a single rock, but it's okay. I gained the Golden Hall Shoe. The Ankh, which protects me against uh, life spells, I believe. It would make sense for it to protect me against death spells. Doubles the effectiveness of resurrect and animate spells. Interesting. Anything of note over here? Resurrect true. Might as well learn that. Why not? And let's not march straight out for Dimitri and Zam to take the castle. Let's stay in and replenish mana points. Also, let's desperately try to deliver reinforcements, even though I know that's not going to happen. They walk right by. All right, fine. They are not running away from me, though. Did indeed go... About as well as one would ex Well... Was that better than expected? She didn't cast any parting spells. I think Dimitri will be the final hero and uh, that'll be the ending to our ordeal. I don't think I expected it to go 
any other way considering the stat disparity we do have after all just 12 attack 13 defense 11 spell power 9 knowledge those are some beefy stats for this game I also had my doubts, but then again, no. It's uh, within the radius of, uh, well, one, if you count the first uh, hex as uh, zero. So it's just these surrounding hexes. And as such, targeting right around here only covers these spaces. I was worried it would have a radius of two, in which case that would end very poorly. But it didn't. And besides, I was prepared for losses. Anyway, green has been vanquished. And thus I win, right? As you have proven responsible for the removal of a hated rival, the elven lord Ithalis has agreed to support the Empire in its hunt for Krager. He has promised to provide you with a tithe of wood, and any elven forces you encounter will aid you in your quest. However, there is also less fortunate news. The traitor has already unearthed the second piece of the artifact upon Glaive Isle. Turn your attention to the north, where the last piece lies deep within the snowy wastes. A great barbarian kingdom straddles the passes to the Northlands, and you must subdue these fierce raiders before your expedition to the far north may proceed. Would it have made other missions in the campaign easier? We do have the Elven Alliance and the Wood Bonus. These are useful resources and the ability to include any Elves encountered in my army can be somewhat helpful, but I don't know. I'm not sure if it's that meaningful. Either way, the only mission that remains for me to beat, for me to beat uh, the entirety of this campaign, all the missions, is the Giant's Pass. But I think I will take care of that further down the line some other time. I think I'll be done for now. Elven Alliance. Well, yeah, one would assume that there would be such stacks to pick up. Otherwise, if you leave it all to chance, that uh, would be significantly disappointing. But then again, ugh. we had the same sorts of choices in the uh, campaign for the vanilla game. You could get the Alliance, the Dragon Alliance or the Dwarven Alliance. Would I, I'd uh, hazard a guess, um, not, not really a guess. I think the, the I think the Dragon Alliance is significantly more meaningful. <laughs> but still, still. The dwarves are not to be underestimated. The ability to just pick up a unit off the map and go on your merry way a conquering, of course, is not something I look down on. And of course, I do have that bonus for the next scenario. And the next scenario will be the last scenario of this mission. So uh, I am not missing out. <laughs> But yes, it presumably would have altered my perception of mission 6, 7, and 8, which I will not replay with the bonus. But either way, I think I am done for now. I will be back in a week. Either way, thanks for watching. Thank you kindly for watching. It really means a lot to me. And uh, you will see me elsewhere.